certainly a pleasure to be before you once again. I would like to extend my gratitude for those who offered prayers on behalf of Seth and Naomi. We're all grateful to be back with you. You will find within the book filled with numbers a beautiful passage of scripture. Some have referred to this passage as the Lord's Prayer of the Old Testament. That passage is Numbers chapter 6, verses 22 through 27. Numbers tor- or chapter 6, verses 22 through 27. And it reads, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and unto his son, saying, On this wise you shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel and I will bless them. As we just read, Aaron and his sons were to bless the children of Israel. They were to do this because they made up the priesthood for Israel. As such, this passage has also been called the priestly blessing. In this passage of scripture, we can learn many things about God that are true for us today. Though we do not live under the Old Testament law system, we do have a high priest today. And this priest desires us to or desires to bless us just as richly, if not more so. So this morning let us study the priestly blessing of Aaron's day and then glean from it applications for us today. As always, it's a good thing to define what we mean. What is mean or meant by this priestly blessing? First, we consider verse 24. The Lord bless you and keep you. The term bless means to confer well-being or prosperity. We see this pro- or a similar promise of such blessings was conditional. Found in Deuteronomy chapter 28. Verses 1 through 6. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, and observe to do all his commandments which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set on thee, or set thee high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee, and overtake thee, and thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Blessed shalt thou be in the city, blessed shalt thou be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Blessed shalt thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shalt thou be when thou goest out. Notice the logical order contained in these scriptures and the extent of these blessings. The commands were given to the people, and the promises are offered. Only obedience to said commandments would qualify one in being able to receive the promises offered. Then these blessings would eventually come upon them, and to the extent of overtaking them. However, we must note, that failure to meet these conditions would eventually result in curses rather than blessings, found in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 15 through 19. Disobedience to God's commandments would bring curses to the people. The extent would be the same. These curses would come upon them and likewise overtake them. In each of the areas of prior promise, the direct opposite would occur, which would be the curses. Now the term keep 
The term keep means to provide and care for, to guard and protect. The Old Testament is full of passages that relate to this term keep, and each of them show that Jehovah God is the protector of his people, such as Psalm 23. Another psalm that shows God's care is Psalm 121, which reads, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills, for whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Sounds very similar to our original text. This psalm depicts Jehovah God as an ever watchful shepherd that will protect and care for his sheep, that is, the nation of Israel, as long as they're faithful to them, to him. Then the phrase, the Lord make his, his face shine upon you and be gracious to you, again found in verse 25 of our text. To make his face shine upon is an idiom. This would indicate that God's smile of approval or favor is upon his people, especially if they are to obey his commands and thereby benefiting from the associated blessings. Similar language is employed elsewhere within Scripture, such as in Psalm 31, verse 16, Psalm 80, verse 3, and Daniel chapter 9, verse 17. This type of thinking, this line of thinking, is well within God's character. God is light. 1 John chapter 1, verse 5. Walking in the light puts us in fellowship with God and all others who are faithful to Him. 1 John chapter 1, verses 6 through 7. Thus, it would be quite an easy thing for God to shine upon us favorably, or specifically Israel at this time. And then to be gracious. This means to bestow favor upon, especially that which is unmerited. Thus, the favor here refers to the blessings received by keeping the commandments of the Almighty, as we mentioned prior. It would then follow that these blessings are unmerited, even though conditionally offered to be obedient. Next, the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace, verse 26. To lift up one's countenance is very similar to his, that is, the Lord's face shining upon the faithful. However, this indicates that his pleasure and his affection are toward those who are obedient to his will. This shows his approval and recognition of this obedience. Thus, he would acknowledge them to be the recipients of those promises and blessings that already were put forth. Then the word peace. This does not refer to absence of war as the world would commonly think of. On the contrary, God promised that war would come. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 7 says, The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and, be and flee before thee seven ways. So peace is not a promise of absence of war or conflict. God promised that war would occur. However, that victory would be granted. The peace that God offers is not the absence of war. It's not the absence of conflict.
but rather it is the state of being right or righteous before God. The fullness of well-being brings closure to one and eases the conscience before God. This is true peace. God promised the collective of Israel this same peace if they were faithful to him. Leviticus chapter 26 verses 6 through 9 says, And I will give peace in the land, and you shall lie down, and none shall make you afraid. I will rid evil beasts out of the land, neither shall the sword go through your land. And you shall chase your enemies, and they shall fall before you by the sword. And five of you shall chase an hundred, and an hundred of you shall put ten thousand to flight. And your enemies shall fall before you by the sword, for I will have respect unto you, and make you fruitful, and multiply you, and establish my covenant with you. Peace was also extended to the individual who trusted and obeyed Jehovah. Isaiah chapter 26, verses 3 through 7, which there states, Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. Trust ye in the Lord forever. For in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. For he bringeth down them that dwell on high, the lofty city. He layeth it low. He layeth it low even to the ground. He bringeth it even to the dust. The foot shall tread it down, even the foot of the poor, and the steps of the needy. The way of the just is uprightness. Thou, most upright, Dost weigh the path of the just. Again, that's Isaiah chapter 26, verses 3 through 7. God most certainly wanted to, to bless the nation of Israel and ultimately provide for them and care for them. Do you think anything has changed today for the house of spiritual Israel? Do you think God desires to bless us? Well, let's make the application for us today. Compare and contrast. The Lord bless you and keep you. God indeed desires to bless spiritual Israel today. He has located these blessings in one place. And that place is his only begotten son, Jesus the Christ. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. These blessings will only come to those who possess the beautiful attitudes. We refer to these as the Beatitudes, found in Matthew chapter 5, verses 3 through 12. He has promised care for us today. Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 through 32. Passage, no doubt, we're all familiar with, but to call it to remembrance, we'll read it. Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 through 32. Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye, are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which is today, or which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall not he much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. Think of the family. Children 
don't fully realize that they need all the different physical requirements of life in the flesh. However, the parents do know, at least they should know, who supplies those children those different uh, necessities. It's the parents. And just as a loving parent, God provides for spiritual Israel. We do know that this promise is conditional. Matthew chapter 6, verses 33 and 34. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought of the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Now, this does not mean that if you put $100 in the collection plate, you will receive $10,000 in return. I know that has been a thought pushed on many over the ages. That's not the point here. The point is be faithful to God. Don't worry about those things of a physical nature. They will be supplied. Instead, this points to a life of service to God. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. We must take the example of Jesus our Savior in Luke chapter 2, verse 49. Being about our Father's business. We, we may not have, and most of the times we will not have, what many would consider a glamorous life. But we will have those things that we need to survive. Well, how would God accomplish these things? This can be accomplished ultimately by following God's commands. As a father, being the financial provider of the house or the home ultimately puts food on the table. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 10. Now when times get difficult and the family is not able to supply those needs of that family, that is going beyond the, that thing which is reasonable, we can ultimately rely on our brothers and sisters in Christ. Galatians chapter 6, verse 10. So the need of some allows for the opportunity of the brothers and sisters in Christ, spiritual Israel, to do what they can to supply the needs of others. Then we consider again the phrase, the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Just as God has located all spiritual blessings within his Son, so God's grace is manifested through Jesus Christ, his Son. John chapter 1, verse 17. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. This grace of God has appeared unto all men. Titus chapter 2, verse 11. This grace comes only through Christ Jesus. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 7. This grace is given by Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 4. And this grace has been made available to all men. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. We receive this grace through faith. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. Now we gain faith by consuming and feeding upon God's word. Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Faith in God will ultimately produce obedience in the individual. Thus, an acceptance of the grace extended, which is salvation. Hebrews chapter 5, verses 8 through 10. Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them, here's the key, that obey him, called of God and high priest after the order of Melchizedek. We then see that God's grace in salvation in the conversion of Saul of Tarsus. Acts chapter 26, verses 15 and eight through 18. Again, God's grace pictured here. And I said, Who art thou, who art thou Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. But arise, and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, 
to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen, and of those things in the which I will appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles, and unto whom now I send thee, to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light, and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. God does, in fact, show his smile of favor upon us today. We must accept this free gift from God through humble obedience. We must even take heed to accept it. But we must be careful not to accept it in vain. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verses 1 and 2. We then as workers together with him beseech you also that ye receive not the grace of God in vain. For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted and in the day of salvation have I succored thee. Behold now is the accepted time. Behold now is the day of salvation. Then we consider the phrase once more, The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. As we stated, peace is not the absence of war. But true peace is only possible through Christ. Romans chapter 5 verses 1 and 2. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. <coughs> by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope and the glory of God. Philippians chapter 4 verse 7 And the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. You see when one obeys the gospel they have the full right to enjoy this promise of living at peace with their creator. We must keep in mind that this promise is offered to all of mankind. However, only the obedient will make full benefit and be able to enjoy this right. By obeying the gospel that is outlined in the New Testament, we receive an eased conscience. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 21 ultimately by being baptized for the remission of sins. Because up until that step, the conscience should bother you. But taking that final step, the act of, a, of baptism, removes that guilt from you. We know from Isaiah chapter 48, verse 22, that the wicked do not receive such benefit. The Father has offered peace to all of mankind through the gospel of his Son. Would we accept this peace by being obedient to his will? This morning we have discussed the priestly blessing. Again, coming from Numbers chapter 6, verses 22 through 27. We study that God wants to bless the nation of Israel under the Old Testament law system. And in fact, he did. This was accomplished through the priests under the Aaronic priesthood. Furthermore, we considered how this would apply for us today, more than 3,000 years afterward. The same type of blessings are available for us today. These blessings are extended only through the Son of God, that is, Jesus the Christ, our high priest. Hebrews chapter 4, verses 14 through 16. Thus, if you desire to be a recipient of these blessings, you must first be in Christ. Having him as your high priest is how God blesses his people today. Spiritual Israel. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. One enters the body of Christ by complying with the terms of entrance. And that is growing your faith in Christ as the very Son of God. John chapter 20, or 8, verse 24. Repenting of your past sins, Acts chapter 3, verse 19. 
making public confession of your faith in Christ. Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. And then being baptized for the remission of sins. Galatians chapter 3, verses 26 and 27. Only then will you be added to the church. You do not join the church of your choice. The Lord adds you to the body of the saved. Acts chapter 2, verse 47. Now as a child of God, have you allowed your sins to separate you and your, from your Creator? Why not take the next few moments to repent, confess, and be restored? 1 John chapter 1, verses 7 through 9. Make full benefit of this priestly blessing. So whichever of these is your need this morning, please make it known as together we stand and sing. <laughs> 